The best place to start with figuring out how to learn to use LLMPy is the paper in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. Um, it's an application paper type, so you can get the PDF for free, um, regardless of whether you have a subscription to the journal or not. The paper explains the objective of the package and also illustrates some examples of neutral landscape models that you can create using LLMPy. The figures themselves are particularly important to take a look at and understand why they're important because later on, as part of the tutorial, we'll be recreating these figures. But before doing anything else, the first thing you should do is go back to the website for the paper and download the supplementary material. Under the Supporting Information tab, you'll find the supplementary material for the paper. Of the files that you've downloaded, the first one to take a look at is the reference card. The reference card shows you two things. On the first side are all the neutral landscape model functions, and on the second side are additional functions. Taking a closer look at the neutral landscape model functions, you can see that for a given function, such as the random function, the parameters that are required are listed. In this case, there are simply two, the number of rows and the number of columns you require in your array. That's essentially all the information we need to know to go about making a neutral landscape model with NLMPy. But to demonstrate it, I've jumped into Spider here um, in order to run some code. So first of all, what we'll need to do is import the package. Once we've done that, it's then very simple to create a new neutral landscape model. In this case, we'll use the random function and create a, um, a neutral landscape model that's five rows and five columns. If we take a look at that, we can now see that we've created a, a five by five away array with numbers that range from zero to one. This is our first neutral landscape model. Of course, it's not very easy to see quite what's going on here because we simply have an array of numbers. So this is why the scripts that produce the figures in the paper have been provided. So let's take a closer look at one of the other supplementary material files, which is the script that's designed to create figure one. I've opened that script up in Spider in order to have a quick look at the code. It begins with some header information, and at the bottom we have some code that actually does the plotting of some neutral landscape models. But the key section to, for you to pay interest in is the section of code that's creating neutral landscape models. Essentially what is happening here is we're creating a whole bunch of neutral landscape models that are 50 by 50 in dimensions and they're being plotted up in order to create what you can see in figure one in the paper. If we now run this script it will produce that figure for us. What you can see in the resulting plot is exactly the same as what you can see in figure one in the paper. Each line of code in the script relates to a matching plot in the figure. So you can easily figure out how to create each of these neutral landscape models. The idea behind this is that if you can see a neutral lands landscape model which looks like that which you'd like to achieve yourself, you can use this example script as a basis for creating a neutral landscape model that's similar but specific for your requirements. Again, I would suggest reading the paper itself in order to make the link between what's going on in the code, what's going on in the figure, and the actual methods that are being implemented that are described in the paper. We can also do a very similar thing in order to create figure two in the paper. However, figure two is reliant on some GIS elevation data, which it needs to import. That data is, was included as well as part of the supporting information, but unfortunately as part of being archived by the journal, the file name has been changed. So what we need to do is first of all, just correct this by renaming one of the files, the .asc file that contains the elevation data. I've opened the script that creates figure 2b in Spider in order to again take a look at the code. There's header information at the top, some code that plots the resulting LLM at the bottom, and the important code that creates the hierarchical neutral landscape model in the middle. And if we run this code, we will create the figure shown in 2b. What we have created here is a hierarchical neutral landscape model in which different neutral landscape model algorithms have been applied to different elevational gradients, with those elevational gradients being determined by the input data. Once again, the idea here is that if you want to create something similar yourself, you can use this script as an example to get yourself started. The final thing that's important to note about this example script is that if you go back to look at your directory, you'll see a new file has been created. This is because this particular script that generates figure 2b actually exports the resulting LLM as a new file. This means that you can create files that you later can import into the GIS system or another piece of software. 